Hi, this is Stacy Slade with Sit Stay with Stacy Slade. I've got Frenzy is going to join me today, and Deuce is watching from the shade. This is Frenzy's favorite topic. We're going to talk about food today. Frenzy thinks this is amazing. We're talking about food. If you like what you hear today, please do subscribe to my channel. We talk about grooming, training, raising puppies, specifically Bernese Mountain Dogs, and all the things in between. And I'm happy to answer any questions anybody has about this amazing breed. But today, let's talk about a very common asked question about how do I feed my Bernese Mountain Dog? Well, there are a few things, a few basics that those of us who've raised the breed for 20, 30 plus years know what works. So I'm gonna share with you what works for me. There are many ways to feed a dog. Do not take this as the only way to do it. It's just what has worked for me and my dogs. And each dog is different, just as as humans, we're all different and we need different nutritional requirements in our day. So the most people feed kibble, which is Frenzy's favorite. She's sitting here pretty excited about all of this. I just did not catch that. So kibble is the easiest way to feed your dog. Is it the only way? By no means. There is raw, there's fresh, so many different types of kibble. There's so many different ways to feed dogs that it does pay to research. It does talk, pay to talk to the experts, but most people come back to kibble because it's easy. Okay. So kibble you can find at any grocery store, any pet store online. And there are so many, this is a $4 billion industry. So they're marketing to us on TV, everywhere that you see on social, but it really does pay to actually talk to the experts, talk to nutritionists, talk to a nutritionist, find out what are the best things for your dog. First, you want to ask your breeder. You trusted this person to give you a puppy, to raise a healthy puppy, right? Frenzy, come here. And you want to make sure you know what they're feeding. So ask your breeder what they're feeding their puppies. They have to be weaned onto some type of food. And I strongly, strongly, strongly suggest continue feeding your puppy that food for at least a month after you get it. Why? It is the one thing you can control that doesn't change in your puppy's life when you bring them home. Every other thing in their life changes except what you feed them can stay the same. So for the health of the GI system, for the puppy to be healthy, please feed them the same food that, they, that your breeder has been feeding them. Talk to your breeder about the food, why they selected it, how long the puppy should be on it, and how much they're giving the puppy at that point in time. An eight week old puppy should eat about three cups of food a day, divided up into at least two to three or four meals and about, you know, divided up equally. Give or take on the puppy's size, they might need more, they might need less. You will continue to increase your puppy's food through their life through about 10, 11 months old, depending on the puppy. Females are a little bit less, males are a little bit more, but it also depends on the, the physical attributes of your puppy. Some of these dogs are small, some of them are large. So asking some a blanket question on Facebook of how much you feed a dog at this age does not help you because I've got slobber on my shirt, that's awesome. It does not help you because your puppy is not their puppy. It's just different, humans eat different nutritions. So definitely, know that your puppy is different. Talk to your veterinarian, talk to your breeder, and talk to a nutritionist. What I'm going to share with you is a guideline. So feed your dog through its entire life at least two times a day, if not three or four, Sp spacing out their meals over time so they can digest them. One large meal does not work well for a dog's digestive system and, and, and actually can cause more gas issues in their tummy. People ask, what do I feed my dog? As in, what brands? So there are 5 million brands of dog foods if you haven't noticed. Feed the brand that your breeder and your nutritionist suggest. Some people vary their proteins. I like to mix proteins. My dogs don't eat the same food their entire life. I make sure it's usually the same brand or another brand that I recommend that I like. 
and I mix their food. So they get different proteins, so their bodies are used to processing different chicken or beef or pork or salmon, you name it. There's so many different, bison, trout, all this. There's so many different types of protein. So vary it up when your puppy or when your dog, I usually don't vary my puppies. Usually after a year old is when I start mixing in different proteins to get them used to it. People ask, should I be feeding large breed puppy? When should I feed adult? When do I transition? Again, talk to your breeder, talk to your vet. I transition to adult food fairly early in my puppy's lives, about three to four months. That doesn't work for everyone. It doesn't, it's not, uh, it's, it, it's something that has worked for me and so I continue to do it. You want to feed a large breed puppy food to a large breed dog. Bernese Mountain Dogs are large breed dogs. The reason why you feed a large breed food is because they need to grow slowly. These bones, muscles, tendons, ligaments need to grow slowly. So we want to feed up food that supports slow growth, which large breed puppy food does. So does adult food, as long as the protein is low, you want less than 27% in protein to encourage slow growth. Higher protein foods aren't good for our large breed dogs. Make sure that you have a protein that's lower than 27%. And the more important ratio that people forget is the calcium to phosphorus ratio. You want that to be as close to one to one as possible between calcium and phosphorus. If it's 1 to 1.3, that's fine. Somewhere in there, you want that to be as close as possible to encourage slow growth in our puppies. So whether it's adult food that you're feeding and all life stages food or a large breed puppy, that's what you're looking for. You don't want to feed your dog more food. More is not better. You want to feed them the right amount. Usually on the back of the package, I never look at those. I look at my dog. If you have a 60 pound Bernese Mountain Dog versus a 110 pound Bernese Mountain Dog, you're gonna be feeding a different amount. If you're walking your dog a mile or two, you're gonna be feeding different a day, different than someone who doesn't exercise their dog daily or isn't a high energy dog. You've got to look at the dog that you're working with and assess that. Learn how to feel ribs. So normally, your dog, when you feel your dog's ribs, make a fist and make it tight. Run your fingers over the top of your knuckles. That's what you should feel when you feel ribs. You should feel, you should feel the ribs. You shouldn't have to dig into the skin to feel ribs. Their skin, they get the layer of fat and it keeps growing and they get thicker and thicker around their ribs. So you might be able to say, oh, I can still feel them, but you're pushing in and, it's, and you gotta be able to feel past the coat. Also feel back to the tummy. See if the tummy is coming straight out from the rib cage, if it comes out in a bulge, if it, you can't even feel a tummy, if it's too tight in from the rib cage and goes in. So all of those things, you need to be able to feel your dog and know where its weight is. If you have any questions, take it to a breed, your breeder. If you have any other questions, join your local uh, Bernese Mountain Dog Club and have other people who you value their opinion feel your dog. It's important to do. Weight is so important to keep a lean dog growing uh, very slowly with these dogs. Do not get them fat. You also have to consider medical conditions, sensitivities, potential allergies with your dog. Generally, um, you know, I vary it up if your dog is struggling with a certain food, work on transitioning it to a new protein. But do not do this often. Do not do it immediately when you first get your puppy. Stay the course. The first thing you do is take in a fecal example to your vet to make sure it's healthy. Then you start working from there, but don't change everything and don't continue changing it. Take three to four weeks to transition your dog to any food. It's a long time. If your dog has soft stool, I have another video on all about poop and how to identify and how to prevent and treat diarrhea. But the biggest source is overfeeding puppies, feeding them too much food gives them diarrhea, or trying to transition them to different foods all the time. Keep it simple, keep it consistent, and do anything you do slowly. Um, when you're looking at a food, you want the first ingredient to be a protein, chicken, beef, salmon, whatever. It needs to be a protein. Hopefully two of the first three to four ingredients on the back of the bag is a protein. That's what you wanna feed your dog. Um, corn is a really, really cheap filler. I try and stay away from foods with corn. Um, 
talk with your vet about grain-free foods. Some, some dogs do great on grain-free. It has been linked to some issues, and so you want to talk about those risks with your, with your vet and what works best for them. Uh, just remember, dogs are not people. They should not be eating what people eat. They need a different diet with different balanced nutrition. I've got kibble here that I feed my dogs. I also feed out of a metal bowl. Um, that way it's cleaner. I don't do plastic. Uh, to make sure that I can clean these and it's a it's better uh, to feed them from. It's also frenzy proof. You can't chew on these. When you're scooping your dog's food, use an actual scoop that's a measurement. This is a two cup scoop. I know how much my dogs are eating. I don't use a mug. So this way, if they travel or anything else, I can say feed one cup, feed one and a half cups, feed two cups twice a day, whatever it is. So use a scoop, an actual measured scoop. I will quickly uh, go into, so if you feed raw, there's also dehydrated raw. I like to use dehydrated raw as a topper on my dog's food. Different proteins, I, they love to eat it. It makes their food exciting. Just know that kibble's like McDonald's and the cheaper the kibble you get, the more like McDonald's it gets. Just know that kibble is baked. So a lot of the good nutrients are baked out of it so they can uh, market it into a bag and sell it to us economically. That's why raw is sometimes is in fresh food is nutritionally better for your dogs if you're doing it correctly and uh, going on the advice of a nutritionist. But with kibble is I use something like Stella and Chewy's or their uh, dehydrated raw to put over the top of them. I, I put chopped up chicken or chopped up pork or chopped up, you know, beef on the top of my dog's food and mix it in. So they have something new and different. I would not feed my dog the same thing every day for every day of its life. Make it fun for them. People also ask me what supplements I use. I'll quickly go into what I use. You're gonna get a different answer from everybody you talk to, but these are the ones over 20 years of, of raising Bernese Plus that I have settled on that support my dogs. My favorite, my favorite one is Glycoflex. Any number of Glycoflex works for joint supplements. A lot of people use Cosequin and Dos or Cosequin and Chondroitin. This is a green-lipped muscle, which is also a Chondroitin, um, but it is pure green lip muscle. I love it for joints, joint health. Be through the entire life of my dog. Fish oil, it's good. I use Grizzly, but I use fish oil on everybody's food. Something that I find really important for puppies is vitamin C uh, to help support uh, their slow growth, their tendons, their ligaments, their bones is vitamin C. Cran Tri C from Dogzymes, Nature's Pharmacy, uh, one of my favorites. It also helps uh, if you have a dog that's prone to UTIs, but this is a good supplement to use. Cran Tri C. The other thing that I don't go anywhere without and I always tell everybody to use with their dogs is a good probiotic. I use again, Nature's Pharmacy, one of my favorites. There's Fortiflora with Purina. There's so many different types of good probiotics or prebiotics are also important. Good gut on your dog, good healthy gut makes for a happy dog. Their immune system is healthy. If you can, if you can build up their immune system and their gut, you'll have a healthy dog. I also do add some vitamin E in there that's just from the store. So happy to answer any questions. Again, guys, this is not the Bible. This is just how I do it. Um, I think the important thing is to research a little bit, do your due diligence so you know what you're doing and not sourcing it off of uh, folks that don't know what they're doing. So making sure you're talking to the experts. Um, happy feeding with your dogs. Please subscribe to my channel and uh, let me know if this video is helpful.